my friends having understood acute scrotum quite in detail now let's shift our discussion to an organ which is quite neglected in scrotal ultrasound imaging and that is epididymis so you all have learned the sono anatomy of epididymis and one of the most common presentation in day to day practice is of epididymitis so let's see this case where a 32 year old male patient who had an underlying urinary tract infection was sent for ultrasound these are the images the b mode where you can see a normal looking left epididymis but look at the right epididymis it's enlarged heterogeneous and inhomogeneous in eco texture when you switch on color doppler there is increased vascularity in that inhomogeneous area whenever you see something like this epididymis with increased vascularity unless proved otherwise this is epididymitis now epididymitis is very commonly seen condition especially in post pubertal men where the common culprit is either a lower urinary tract infection caused by e coli pseudomonas or very commonly they are also seen with uh, sexually transmitted diseases mainly gonorrhea being culprit ultrasound signs are very classical thickened enlarged inhomogeneous epididymis with increased vascularity on doppler with a reactive hydrocele having seen this this epididymitis can spread down into the testes and cause epididymorchitis or it can go up in the cord and it can cause associated funiculitis so you could have an overlapping presentation of each of this so this talks about acute epididymitis but what about chronic epididymitis the way there are acute inflammatory pathologies of epididymis can you have chronic pathology of epididymis yes you know that long standing epididymitis not getting uh, treated uh, and having a resistance can present to you as chronic epididymitis but in india genito urinary tuberculosis is very very common and can present to you in day to day practice where you get this thickened irregular epididymis or an epididymal mass you see calcifications within this epididymis which is one of the clue clincher to pick up chronic epididymitis so see this case given by my fellow colleague shreyas where um, he was flummoxed that the testes on one side was normal and this was this was the enlarged testes which showed a permeative pattern like this you promptly feel this is looking like leukemia and lymphoma but when we scanned his epididymis his epididymitis there was gross epididymitis with increased vascularity we did work up of this patient and this indeed is been described as tuberculous epididymitis epididymorchitis in fact that appearance is called as miliary uh, pattern of testicular involvement in uh, tb where uh, epididymis as well as the testes both get infected uh, in uh, uh, in cox then see this case testes was completely normal and uh, epididymis was normal but lying within this test epididymis was this focal hypoechoic area increased vascularity we thought whether this is a testicular a torsion of the testicular appendage but patient did not have any pain and there was this silent asymptomatic lesion lying there the surgeon did an fna of this lesion and indeed this turned out to be cox so cox can have bizarre presentations in human body but sometimes eco poor lesions within the epididymis or the permeative pattern the way we saw in testes both can have present as cox in india and very commonly seen uh, before concluding with this part of the lecture unusual case outcome i want to show in this case so this was one young guy with severe uti infection we saw this kind of picture so now by now i have trained you to see that epididymis is enlarged ecogenic bulky you know this is epididymitis then we put in color we knew there is increased vascularity we confidently called up the surgeon and said that it's a straight forward case of an epididymorchitis the patient was put on heavy antibiotics and sent home because we made a confident diagnosis of epididymorchitis patient was followed up after 3 weeks of antibiotics and the surgeon called me up and said rajesh i can feel that this whole lesion has increased in size and in fact i can feel a lump within this testis kindly reevaluate so simple epididymorchitis 4 weeks of antibiotics 
a big googly what had happened is that this whole testes which was normal initially had turned out into a large collection with eco poor areas within it moving internal ecos what looking at this what you think this is looking like an abscess or a scrotal wall collection now testes was completely replaced by this eco poor collection when we studied about this this is nothing but in all diagnosed cases of epidermal orchitis patient had so much severe infection that it led to venous outflow obstruction at the level of epididymis which lead to testicular infarction and this lead to complete liquefactive necrosis within this testes therefore now in our every patient of epidermal orchitis we write that please follow up after 4 weeks of antibiotics because sometimes there can be googly cases like this where the testes had completely undergone infarction because of severe bad epidermal orchitis now having finished testes and epididymis uh, the acute pathologies there can be lesions seen dep depending upon where the area is like epididymis cord or tunica vaginalis and let's look at it which are simpler cases to diagnose in day to day practice so one is anechoic cystic lesion lying at the head of the epididymis good acoustic enhancement you know like any cyst in human body looks like this this is nothing but an epididymal cyst sometimes same in that area you see a multilocular appearance thin walled septae like this now there is a debate whether this is a epididymal cyst multiple or whether this is a spermatocele so now they say that if you see thin walled uh, septae multilocular appearance like this lying at the head of the epididymis majority of the times this leads to a spermatocele most of the times these are spermatocele but trust me is difficult to differentiate one from another but we in our practice we write if it is a single lesion as epididymal cyst but if it is multilocular multisepticated like this we say that this is most probably a spermatocele many of these patients in fact have undergone vasectomy and they show this kind of spermatocele where this case uh, clearly shows this on the video having said that can there be a tumor within the epididymis yes one of the most commonest tumor has of the epididymis have a, has an overlapping appearance with torsion of the testicular appendage now how are you going to diagnose that one asymptomatic versus symptomatic epididymal tumors the commonest tumor is a adenomatous tumor of the epididymis which typically lies in the tail of the epididymis ecogenic mass now that's a difficult diagnosis to make but you will see that adenomatous tumor is a silent lesion as against a uh, torsion of testicular appendage or an epididymal appendage is going to have an acute presentation may making the torsion best way to differentiate is, is silent versus an uh, symptomatic lesion so typically an ecogenic mass well uh, circumscribed hyperechoic than testes unless proved otherwise these are epididymal adenomatous tumors there is a huge list of lesions lying within the epididymis depending upon the uh, connective tissue structures fat lying there we are not going to go into the details of the same but there can be lesions lying in the cord pediatric age group anechoic cystic lesion you know that this is a bayonet shape entrapped within the cord unless proved otherwise these are nothing but encysted hydrocell of the cord but in india filariasis is very very common so many a times you will see that the cord area is replaced with this multiple anechoic cystic structures which is not picking up vascularity on ultrasound and doppler these are nothing but lymphangiectasia in the cord so whenever you see lymphangiectasia in the cord you need to report this that they will show no color flow on imaging but always in endemic areas of india the most common uh, pathology is filariasis so you should go and search didactically in all areas of lymphangiectasia for this filarial dance which uh, here in samil gandhi sir's case we saw there was lymphangiectasia but we could pick up this filarial dance so whenever you see some filarial dance like this and lymphangiectasia putting two and two in india we write a confident diagnosis of filariasis but 
the western countries don't accept our school of thinking because they say that their filariasis is not very common they say that this kind of appearance happens because of brownian motion because of macro agglutinate or macrosperms which undergo agglutination and these also show brownian motion and show this kind of filarial dance so they say that there is nothing called as filarial dance but i still feel in our indian scenario with filariasis is being still so common whenever you see lymphangiectasia with filarial dance you should make a prompt diagnosis of filariasis but in abroad countries they write it as a brownian motion artifact so this is the video showing the same in cord the most common is benign pathology is lipoma in fact in 18 years i am yet to see these all rare malignant lesions within the cord the commonest one is lipoma in fact see this surgeon who himself presented with a paratesticular lesion where testes epididymis were completely normal and what we picked up in this paratesticular area is this ecogenic mass completely lying in the region of the spermatic cord on the left side right spermatic cord normal epididymis normal see this was the case it actually looks like a testes being there but this is an ecogenic mass unless proved otherwise if it is in the cord area fibrillar pattern which gives a signature sign of lipomas anywhere in body unless proved otherwise these turn out lipomas